This is the link. Take home talk. Da, 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 da. Amanda Romero is making her third appearance. Da, 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 da. And then this is Christian Burrell. Christian Burrell, have you ever been in a Link Take Home Talk? No. Wow. It's my very first time. You this is his very first time. Many of the Link students may not know who Christian is unless they go to the mix. Unfortunately. Um, but from Kids in the Sun, you've seen him all the time, right, yep. Christian? Yeah. All the time. All right. He's one of our favorites. Uh, he's great. He's a good man. Thank you, Charlie Brown. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so today we are talking about the Holy Spirit and how it. What does the Holy Spirit do? It um, gives us power to overcome sin. In our lives. Boom. Mic drop. And while we talk about this, we have some mystery KFC food. Uh, Christian, do you know what's in here? I have no idea what's in here. I didn't order it. Do you know what's in here? I Wait, do you guys really it. not know? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so the this chicken! this is a uh, special <laughs> food that, that KFC has uh, released recently. And Taylor Brzezinski was very excited to order it for us so we could do a take-home talk. I get chilled talk. when fried chicken's um, around. <laughs> I need to save this. What's that? Can we open it? Bless the money. Oh, what it's is this? It's a donut. It's a oh, chicken. No. Look, chicken. <gasps> Brick! Oh! <laughs> Ew. Oh my gosh. Chicken grease, chicken grease. That's disgusting. <laughs> I just wanted to show them it. I just wanted to show it to the okay. camera. Here, In guys. case you didn't see, here, this is what I it looks like. I wanted to show it to the camera, and I showed it to my pants instead. I'm scared. Um. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah, Savannah! Okay, the donut smells good. Was there good. no bone there? You just got all chicken? <laughs> you didn't give me bone? That's what I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared that... Mm. Bro, the donut smells good, though. It does. Good. But I feel like it's, like, greasy. It smells weird I'll because you can smell like the sweet donut and the chicken grease. And the chicken. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first thing is we were supposed to read Galatians 5.16. 5, 6. Oh, I love this one. So the question <laughs> is, uh, what do you think it means to live by the Holy Spirit? What do you think it means to live by the Holy Spirit? So, so here's the verse on that question. You got it, Christian. Galatians 5.16. <clears throat> Where is it? I so I say, walk in the Spirit. And you will not gratify. gratify the desires of the flesh. Amen. That was it. Walk in the spirit. Wow, this and is And you will not, not gratify. gratify. We're definitely gratifying the sins some of the desires flesh. of the flesh right now. We're, this is this. gratifying something. Mm -hmm. The uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mmm. This is actually good chicken. You know? It's not bad. I mean, it could be better, but you know. Mm hmm. What's important about this is that, or, you know, it means that you want to do anything. Well, you don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I think is interesting. <laughs> Go on. About this. Is that the Bible's not lying and saying, like, oh, you want to follow the Holy Spirit. It's literally saying, like, when you live by the Spirit, you're denying what you want. Like, you know? Like you can, you have the option of glorifying your flesh or of glorifying the spirit. And when you live by the spirit, is what like Amanda said a, a couple weeks ago, like, like, you know, the Holy Spirit urges us and compels us to do things, right? Mm -hmm. When we're living by that, we are not glorifying our flesh. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Well, I think it's saying like, you're walking by the spirit and it's like, okay, so if you're walking next to your friend and they're kind of like, oh, like, oh, I definitely want to go right. And then you're not going to be like, well, you could be like, oh, I want to go left. But you're also like, that's your friend. So like, you want to hang out with your friend and go where they're going. So the spirit's not going to be like, okay, go gratify your flesh. It's going to be like, go gratify what God's desires are around you. Right. So that's what I think about it. I agree. That was good. That was good. It's kind of like chicken and waffles. The donut's not bad. Well, yeah, the donut's hey, really not bad. Hey, chicken and waffles are good. Mm -hmm. It's just really greasy. Oh right. no. Here so goes. I gotta do it too? Are you, yeah, oh, you're doing do it too? It. One, two, three. <laughs> not bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm dripping. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. It not tastes bad. like flesh gratification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know that it <laughs> But we're talking about the spirit, so you know. 
Romans 6, 12 to 14. I got it. Um, so the question is about uh, no longer being slaves to sin, but, but being set free from it. So what does the verse say on it? <laughs> Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. He but, circled this one, so I think it's... it's probably oh, I circled it? This is my personal Bible, everybody. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Ooh, got it. That's pretty good. That's fine. What does that mean to you guys, Christian? What that means to me, you know, sin is tempting. And, like, when you feed into it, it is... It hits you with repetition, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, it just becomes natural yeah. for you to sin. So, I say... Once you find peace, then it sets you free. It opens up doors for you to be free. Mm, that's good. Like this donut? Opens up doors for you to be free. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this donut keeps me going until I don't go anymore. <laughs> As in, if I keep eating it, I might die one day. Oh, fair. Um, so the donut's more like sin than the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Wow. But that's just a personal opinion. <laughs> you know, Pastor Alex hasn't had sugar in like 12 years or something. Yeah. And he's alive. <laughs> mm. I agree with Christian. I think that the circled verse really stuck out to me. Because it said, you're not under the law, but you're under grace. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's when we recognize grace that the Holy Spirit has a has an open door, like we said before, to come in and lead us. Because if we're living under the, the mindset of the law or the mindset of, like, we'll sin and... Um, and just keep sinning or like we have to keep earning our like our freedom through good works instead of grace then we're just going to keep sinning because we can't see grace but if we live already like thinking like grace is is the reason why I'm, I'm free then like we have the opportunity to just not live under the, the the mindset of sin right like before grace you face shame and condemnation mm -hmm. and you kind of feel like I don't know if you guys have ever felt like this before, but but I've definitely I've definitely felt this way before that it's like I just I'm not gonna get better, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I can't get in the habit of reading my Bible daily, so so it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And and I just don't want to try, right? Mm -hmm. But when you remind yourself of the reality that God's actually forgiven me for for forgetting to read my Bible or for choosing to not to or or anything like that, right? God's already, he, his grace is there, and he's ready to welcome me back with open, loving arms going like, hey, no, like, let's get this right this time. And mm. that is way more encouraging. And rather than feeling bad about myself, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like, let's do this. I can I can do this. I can accomplish mm -hmm. this, you know? Um, or kind of like if you're working out and you have, like, a trainer who's, like, there yelling at you. They're not like, you can't do this. You're never going to lift that. Like, that'd be a horrible personal <laughs> trainer, right? <laughs> Instead, they're like, you got this, just one more, like, come on, keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you, like, fail to meet your goal or um, whatever, they're still there the next time you're in to, to help push you to the next level. Um, and I feel like that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. Like, yes. Or imagine him standing there, like, mm -hmm. when you're faced with a situation where, you know, there's the option to glorify your flesh or glorify mm -hmm. the Spirit of God. He's there, like, encouraging you, egging you on to, to do the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well said. Pastor. It's crazy because, like, God knew it would be hard for us. Like, he knew yeah. what would happen already, but, like, he's still there. He still wants to help. So, like, it's crazy. It doesn't add up, but it's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a, an example or a story of a time that you feel like you're faced, faced with uh, choosing between glorifying your flesh and glorifying the spirit? Mm. Do I? She said it like she had well, multiple. Every day, every day, you're yeah. faced with the choice. Yeah. 
Like for every sure. day I wake up and I can't guarantee that I'm going to feel super like awesome or like excited to read my Bible every morning. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a choice that I have to make. And then afterwards I'm like, wow, like that was a good choice because now I feel like spiritually ready to take on my day. So like every day I think I'm faced with it. Every day my someone every day might. I'm shuffling. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> every day someone might like I, I, we don't live in like this perfect world where every person that you walk by or every person you talk to just like you know has a Lips smile on their face and, is and it's just yeah. like you got this you're awesome and says please <laughs> and thank you every time you do something like people um are human and they'll make you mad so every day i have to decide like am i going to respond out of my flesh or respond out of the spirit yeah yeah. So I was easy doing the right thing. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I think there are a lot of times, for me, the time that I'm like faced with this sort of the most that I think about is like when somebody does something that like upsets me or something, I, I don't want to forgive them, right? Mm -hmm. Like I want to be mad or I want to explain why what you just did was wrong or why it hurt me. And um, maybe sometimes I should actually clearly communicate a little bit more that it upset me but since I, do, I don't know how to do it lovingly sometimes you know it's like choosing to follow the spirit is like you know what like I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna decide to be forgiving and say it doesn't you know it doesn't matter or at the end of the day like this isn't gonna end the world and yeah I'm upset about it but we're, we're still friends and this doesn't ruin anything you know yeah like that's I, I feel like all the time I'm 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 trying to like remind myself to not be hateful when I'm mad at somebody or when they let let me down or something, but to instead choose to be like, no, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So the next uh, <laughs> the next question: How can we get help when we need to overcome sin? Well, the answer is actually in Hebrews 4:16. Hebrews, <laughs> great coffee. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Mm. I think that's actually exactly what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's how we need to overcome sin. Um, you know, how can we get help when we need to overcome sin? It's, mm -hmm. according to this verse, it's approaching the throne of God by asking him to help us. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. Like yeah. he's the one that's like leading us to the right place and the reason why we can have that confidence is because God made it he cleared the the pathway of sin through Jesus and he's like here you got the Holy Spirit now come and whatever you need I'm here yeah so and just like Jaden was saying you know like no matter no matter whatever you've been through you know how much you've been through he's always there just mm -hmm. you know as long as hard as you try you know just go out for him mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I, I think sometimes turn, choosing to turn to God is, like, the hardest part. Because mm -hmm. yeah. once we give it to him, you know, he takes control, and there's not, like, much more we need to do. It's so much easier once it's, like, in his hands. Mm -hmm. But it's that initial thought of, like, going for it. God, help me overcome yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, like, the Holy Spirit, like, a lot of times, like, he speaks to you um, as, like, how to act. And so, like... In, in this case, how how can we get help when we need to overcome sin? Um, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to talk to someone at church or hey, talk to someone, yeah. one of your leaders, and, and um, be honest with them and be like, hey, I've been having these bad habits and I need help. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times that's the Holy Spirit telling us to be um, open and be real with um, the people that are older with the, than us, our parents or our yeah. leaders at church to help us to overcome things that we're struggling with. Yeah. That's, That's one actually, of the hardest parts sometimes, you know, being vulnerable mm -hmm. to open yeah. up. Yeah. But it helps a lot, though. Well, that's a really good point because the Bible says, you know, like, uh, we, we can approach the throne of God when we need to, when we need to overcome sin. Uh, but it also says that we get healing from confessing our sins to a brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody that, 